because to you, I truly belong. We're going to test that today. We're going to make sure that ooh, you, we belong to you, Lord. We're going to let <laughs> we're going to let them know who Lord. So, Lord, just thank you again. Please bless his word to be my best yet. Please bless that the devil is terrified. Your name is glorified and the people are edified in here. Please bless that every single person's heart is open. Bless them to understand that your word is truth. I know we might have ideologies and things that we have believed before, but the word of God is truth. And all he wants for you is his fruits. He wants, you know, peace. So, Lord, please bless everyone to have peace after this message and understanding. Lord, please bless that the devil does not block this thing out. I know he's going to try to take away seeds by having distractions, try to come in conversations after the message that could make you think about other things besides what was just said, what thus just said the Lord. Lord, please bless this word not to, man, it just resonate with them for the rest of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all, this is a message today that it's like, it's going to really, um, it's going to really mess with your priorities and what you guys think, you know, you guys knew about. Because we talk a lot about self-improvement, right? Which is really, really good. But now we're going to learn today how to place people. This joint is called, you know, Mike Todd got relationship goals. This message is called relationship roles. You got to know where to place people in order for you not to be stressed out. Because I'm telling you, sometimes you put people in the wrong job description. Sometimes we put people in places where it's not supposed to be and we're wondering why we're so frustrated. You need to know where people should go. And that's the most important thing, I believe, to dealing with people. You know their role. You know their placement in your life. I know Zay is my brother. So Zay is my brother, so I treat him a certain way. But if someone is my mother and father, I got to treat them differently. We got to know how to treat people differently. We got to know how to move this way because, again, everybody loves the scripture, you know, decency and order. The decency is going to the Lord, and the order is you doing what he orders you to do. It's not about the order and things that people want to try to make it. Nah, man. Decency and order is what God wants. Have the decency to come to him, and then the order to do what he does, and he will order your steps. So you, all you got to do is pick up your feet and move. So after this message, I pray that you guys do pick up your feet and move and start placing people where they're supposed to be placed. Take away expectations from people. Today is the expectation snatcher. It's going to snatch their expectations because it's going to place people where they're supposed to be placed, where God wants them placed. So you can stop being so stressed out about this person let me down. Because we're expecting man to really do what is supposed to be done. When we all know the devil is the ruler of this world, why are we expecting people? Never mind. <laughs> Let's get started. This is going to be good. Please don't let the devil, please don't let the devil throw this thing away. He's going to try, okay? But this is what the word of God, this is not my own words, the word of God. I might make a couple jokes, but this is the word of God, okay? It's real, okay? The point of this message is... If, write this down. Everyone, if you can, this is the point of this message, okay? In simplified terms, okay? Y'all ready? Yes. Categorize people, but prioritize Christ. Wow. Categorize people, but prioritize Christ. He is your one desire. He is the person that you prioritize. We have to prioritize because we have to consult him on where to put these people. Because when we start operating off of how they feel, they become the God. We got to say, Lord, where do you want this person placed? Why? Oh, but you got to know based off fruit and what you need. Today, we're going to learn a lot. We're going to also learn about how to pick your mate, your spouse. God gave me a revelation on how and who you know is the one. This is how you know you're in a good place. Amen? Amen. We're going to put roles on everyone. Okay. God has to have the final say, y'all. 
okay? Make sure that if he tells you to cut somebody off, you have to cut him off. Like, it's crazy faith, right? Everyone loves the Mike Tower, you know, video, but do you have crazy faith to go against your flesh? Because sometimes your flesh wants something so bad that you might think that's God. That's not him. Because God wants your fruit to multiply. And if this person is making your fruit not multiply, then that's not, you should put, you can have them in your life, but put them in a different place. There's a reason why God put people in your life, but you gotta place them. You gotta be the organizer, okay? Be in control of your life for once. Stop letting life control you or people's opinions control you. Let God's law control you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can we turn to Luke 14, 26? Jay, you got us, bro. Right, bro? Yep, 1426. Just that verse? Yep, 26. yep. It says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. He said one more time, bro. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, Wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Mm. Amen, bro. Thanks, bro. Ha. Do y'all know what this means? This means, it doesn't mean literally hate them. But in comparison to Jesus, we can't let, because that person is my boo, he dictate what I do with the Lord. Like, huh. You can't let them, huh, you got to love the Lord so much that you understand that, hey, I'm going to like, that's like if I'm with Jasmine, right? But when she's not here, I do certain things that's not according to what she would like. We got to be so strong in the Lord that even when we're not around him or not in his presence or not in church, <laughs> we got to act like he's still there, even if you can't feel his presence. You got to hate what, huh? People's standards are really messed up in this world. But we got to really make sure that we love his standard and obey it and abide by that. That's the only thing we can do and we should do. That's what we can control. You got to hate their perspective and try to put Christ's so that you can finally have control of your life. People want to say you need to be whole. The reason why you're not whole is because you don't have control over your life. You don't know how to move. You don't know who you are. Because if someone's whole, they know who they are, right? But how do you know who you are if you don't know what God says you are? You gotta know who God says you are, which is a masterpiece. So you're perfect, okay? You're perfect, he made you this way for a reason, to give him glory. You know, you gotta remember that those are the things that God has done for you, and that he will make for you. But people are going to try to place you in different places. And they're going to try to say that, oh, man says it's this way, so it should be this way, based off tradition and all the stuff that will change. Traditions change all the time, based off of the time. But the Bible stays the same. He stays the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means his standard stays. Some people try to say the times in the Bible was this way. No, his word stays the same. OK, that standard always is the same. You don't get it because you don't seek the understanding to know what it means. But you have to seek that in order to really find what you deem it huh, is the truth about God's word, because he really is true. You just got to search. And that's where we got to put the effort in. But now we're going to categorize people. Y'all ready? I'm going to go down the list. Toes might be stepped on tonight. I know it's cold, so. We got boots on and stuff, and Jordans, but those are gonna get stepped on too. <laughs> so don't let nobody define to you what love is. <laughs> Sometimes your friends would try to say, you don't love me no more because I don't hang out with you, I don't party with you, I don't smoke, I don't drink with you. 
You don't love me no more. You don't love me no more. I know how many times in my life, man, since I've really accepted Christ, people have really tried to categorize and say, I don't love them no more. I'm like, in all reality, I pray for you. And God says the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So he listens to my prayers. That's real love. God says, look, he shows you what love is by 1 Corinthians 13. If you don't 1 Corinthians 13 somebody, then you definitely don't love them. Love is an action, not a feeling. Again, remember that. You show love by what you do to them, how you treat them. That's why God says love your neighbor. He says treat everyone with love. You have to. But people are going to try to define what love is. <laughs> like they're thinking that love is sin. Whew. Like how can you love somebody if you're doing something to hurt them? Oh, I'm partying with you. Now I don't party with you. Oh, you don't love me anymore. I don't spark with you no more. I don't smoke with you no more. You don't love me no more. <laughs> But really, going away from them actually shows them that, hey, they shouldn't be doing that because I don't want to urge it on. I don't want to urge on sin. That's hurting you more. That's actually hate. That's what the devil tries to do. He tries to steal, kill, and destroy the truth. So you're doing the things that people deem as love, it's going to drive you nuts because they're going to think that you don't love them because you don't sin with them because they're sinners and you're not. They're going to try to bring you down. But don't let them define what love is. I've had so many people that I've cut off, quote unquote. I just prioritize and categorize them and say they're my neighbor, not my brother anymore. I'm serious. We have to know that we got to categorize people, man. We can't let them try to sink us down and make us feel bad. I know I 1 Corinthians 13 you. I know that. So when people say, nah, man, you don't love me no more. Don't listen. OK, because they don't know what love is. How are you going to try to define and call me something that you don't even know the definition of? It's like calling me an N-word, but don't even remember that that's derogatory. <laughs> People don't want to hear that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. People really want to make you try to hobble between two opinions. That's the point of the devil. <laughs> he tries to take from the word of God versus their feelings and ideologies. That's what they want to do. They're trying to confuse you, okay? The word is firm. That's why you need to be around people like this, to help you have a standard of understanding where you should go and where you should move. It helps, okay? Because the world's going to tell you, oh, it's okay to smoke sometimes. Why are you being so holy all the time? You can, you can do this. You can do that. Come on, man. You're like You can't be always a holy roller. Don't be so heavenly minded. You're no earthly good. I'm like, bro, you're telling me to sin. What the heck? I'm sorry, I will be no earthly good. I don't want to be earthly good, to be honest. And also, that's not a scripture. Remember that. When someone says that, say, that's not a scripture. Where is that in the word? But people act like that's scripture. It's not scripture. Why well, would don't say that? <laughs> I'm like, who the heck told you that? Well, yeah, nah, that, nah. <laughs> They're going to try to define it, okay? If you don't know what love is, 1 Corinthians 13, okay? So I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Because 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm ordered to do that for everyone, okay? But the devil wants to make them make you feel as though I don't love you because I don't do it the way you deem as love. You don't conform, not against God's word. If you do that, guess who you're operating as? The devil. Because you're saying that I'm a Christian, but you're messing and flirting with the devil. You don't flirt with the devil, you flee. Resist him and he will flee. You can't dabble, don't do it. If you do it, he's going to bring you down, amen? Huh. Again, any opinion that isn't lined up with the word of God is demonic. That's a scary term, right? Demonic, but it's true. Again, the devil runs this world. So be careful, okay? Be careful. Be careful. It's demonic. Check the word before you do and say anything. But now we're about to have, now this is the peaceful placement, okay? People placement. This is going to be quick. I'm working on my organization, okay? 
I'm working on that. It ain't going to be too long today. Okay? Point number one. Yeah, see, I got points now. Woo! I was just rapping at first. <laughs> now we got points. It was operate straight off the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Couple scriptures, Holy Ghost. <laughs> now it's organized and the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Improvement. Point number one. We have to love everyone. Uh, we have to 1 Corinthians 13, everyone. 1 Corinthians 13 says, you know, love is not boastful. Love is not proud. Love is um, patient. Love is kind. That's what it says. So you got to do all those things to everybody. You got to do those things to everyone. So your neighbor is, is not the person who lives right next to you. <laughs> like people try to say, <laughs> my neighbor is, you know, my next door neighbor. So I got to love him. No, everyone. No, everyone's your neighbor. OK, every single person on Earth, you have to uphold a standard of love for them. But now I'm going to blow your mind. OK. Your earthly friends are your neighbor. OK, they're your neighbor. They're not your brother. They're your neighbor. There's a difference, right? You got to uphold a standard for your neighbor so that they can want to come to Christ. So I can't talk to you and conform to you like you are my bro. I'm not going to be the brother of the devil. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to look like I can look like you. I can't. So am I really a part of your family? Am I really you? Uh, come. We have to understand now, y'all. Your earthly friends are your neighbor. You have to uphold the standard. You don't have to hang with them to be their friend. You don't have to do all these things because it'll stress you out. I'm telling you, it'll stress you out. But we have to uphold the standard of Christ. If they talk to you, you know they're going to get prayed for. So they might just cut you off. And you got to get real. I'd rather have someone cut me off than deal with me. I'd rather get cut off because that's not the full. You got to accept the full cash. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, if you accept the full cash, you're going to receive Jesus. I truly believe that. You hang around me too much. You know, you're going <laughs> to... You might receive the Lord. <laughs> we driving around. He say, you want to pray for me? <laughs> I'm ready to give my life. I'm ready. I'm ready. They're afraid of that. That's why they don't hang with me. <laughs> they know you're going to hear about Jesus. They say, dang, I don't want no salvation. I don't want to give up weed. I don't want to give up. Look, around me, you're going to give up weed. You ain't going to cuss around me. We ain't listening to the trap. We're not going to do that. Come on. It's going to be all clean. <laughs> Listen to that new Glizzy album, Clean. <laughs> It has to be clean now. <laughs> I'm not conforming to you, neighbor. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's when you understand the decency is that you always take into account the Lord. He's always watching you. He's also watching and seeing who can make you conform. When you understand, when, ooh, God will exalt you when you understand how humble you are to him. So he'll exalt you when you understand you can pass the test of your closest friends going against the word of God. <laughs> then he'll exalt you because you can handle more things. Now, when devils try to come at you, you can rebuke the devil, no matter who the vessel is. Ooh. The vessel, ooh, the devil might come as your parents. The devil might come as the pastor. It's all the times when it's not lined up with the word. OK, anyone can be used for a moment. Peter was used and God said, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't calling him Satan, but the enemy used him. So understand that the roles. Even when ooh, even when your friend is not acting, even when your Christly brother is not acting like, you know, a man of God, that's your neighbor. Now, now you got to teach and reel him in. So you got to uphold a standard for your neighbor. Amen. That's your friend. Your worldly friend is your neighbor. So remember, with them, in all honesty, you have to be in a you have to be godly. Okay? You have to. You have to. Because if you look worldly, they're gonna stay how they are. And we want everyone to be in heaven, correct? That's the main goal. They might not see it, 
Because the world is so um, instant gratification. But we look into the hills. I want you there. Forget the party on Saturday. Amen? Okay. Leviticus 9, 17 through 18 says, You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. Don't let them force you into it, man. Don't. The devil wants to find any sliver to try to get you. That's deep, ain't it? Rebuke your neighbor. <laughs> Rebuke him. Mm. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Remember, remember, y'all, don't sin because of them, okay? You will not win if you sin. You can't. <laughs> Better, I'm going to rhyme every time. <laughs> Looking out here like Optimus Prime. <laughs> Yo, that's funny. <laughs> Look, you have to 1 Corinthians 13 them, but not sin with them, man. That's making them a God over Jesus, even in one moment. If you not, that's why it says keep your armor on. You have to keep your armor on because the devil is very sly. And he wants you to fall one time, and it might be detrimental for your whole life. Imagine you falling with your neighbor. They're going to say, oh, he lukewarm. Think about that. Leviticus 19:17 through 18. I'm telling you. When you act worldly around your worldly friends, then godly over here, they're going to think you're lukewarm. Don't think they're not taking notes. The devil takes notes. Amen? So your neighbor is anyone who's not born again. Deal? Remember that. Your neighbor is anyone who's not born again. So he says rebuke. Okay? Don't be afraid to rebuke them. Y'all know what rebuke means. Tell them when they're wrong. Don't let them keep doing it. Because that's not love. If my mama never spanked me when I was doing something wrong, then that's, she's going to let me keep on doing the wrong thing. It's not right. Amen? Tell me that I'm wrong. That's when you know someone loves you. Yep. So, yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. Number two. Point number two. OK. Love your brother and sister in Christ. OK. Point number two, because we got to know how to place them. Amen. Because we can't treat our brother and sister in Christ as our neighbor. And we can't treat our neighbor better than we treat our brother and sister in Christ. Wait, do you all understand that? Our brother and sister in Christ should be treated way better than someone who's your neighbor. Y'all hear me? There should be a separation. Because brothers and sisters in Christ should be able to talk to each other about our issues. Pray for me. Make sure I'm okay. Can you check on me? Can you listen to me and I can speak to? And tell you what's going on with me without judgment? Because this is stuff, this is life. This is real life. A Christian, you should be able to come to a Christian without them going off and telling everybody about your business. Mm -mm. But we should have that safe place here as Christians to make sure that we understand that we are brothers and sisters. What stays in BAM, what's said, what's said in BAM stays in BAM because we're trying to get it better. We're trying to, you know, help each other. We're trying to pray for each other, you know. Also, another thing, there's nothing wrong with asking and saying I need prayer and someone saying, hey, pray for blah, 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 because they need help. That's not gossip. That's trying to get help. That's the real doctor. That's the real healing we need up in here. You know, if something's wrong with me and I tell Jay, I want Jay to say, y'all pray for cash. How, imagine how many pray. Ooh, all oh, y'all praying for one soul. My Lord, that's beautiful. That's what God wants. So can you turn to Acts 2.42? This is how you got to treat your brother and sister in Christ. Okay? 
I'm almost done. That's awesome. <laughs> See, look, I'm, I'm working. I'm getting better. That's my little dude right there. That's my little dude, man. Y'all ready? Mark 3, 35. 35, 35. Yo, Jay, you got me? You said Acts 2. Oh. Oh, Acts 2, 42, my bad. Wait, wait. Go to, read Mark 3, 35, and then go to Acts 2, 42. My bad. That was my flesh, not the spirit. <laughs> yeah. No, when, when it's wrong, it's not the Lord. <laughs> 345 it says for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother mm. this is Jesus speaking can you say can you do Acts 335 too Acts yeah and then Acts 242 Acts 335 I mean Mark I'm sorry Mark, let me do it sorry my, my bad, y'all. Dang it. <laughs> All right, Mark 3.35. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and my sister and my mother. Okay? All right, my bad, bro. <laughs> Had you scrolling on me? <laughs> my bad, bro. Your thumbs, I know your thumbs tired. It's okay. <laughs> Look, Mark 3.35. For whoever does the will of God is my brother my sister and my mother. Jesus Christ was saying that. We're his brother. We're his sister. <laughs> Whew. Whoever does the will of God. What does God say? If you love me, obey my commandments, right? So anyone who loves the Lord is your brother and sister. It says, anyone who does the will of my father, I will pray to the father and I'll make my abode with him. That means people who are Holy Ghost filled believers, that's your brother, sister and mother. That's why we all connect so well. We're family now. Those who do the will. So when you call your worldly friend, bro, sorry, neighbor. <laughs> you're not my bro, okay? <laughs> Look, you're, you're, my, you're my neighbor. What's up, Nabe? <laughs> What's good, Nabe? <laughs> neighbor! <laughs> <laughs> Straight neighbor. I'm calling them neighbor now. <laughs> they only gonna be like, bro, I don't live next to you. <laughs> I said, look, you my neighbor in spirit, brother. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody tap your neighbor. <laughs> don't tap nobody because none of y'all neighbors. <laughs> y'all do the will of God. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get y'all. That was a test. So, you know. Okay, so Acts 2.42. This is how we're supposed to treat our brother and sister, okay? So everyone in here, this is how we should uphold a standard, okay? Of how we should move around each other, right? Okay? Acts 2.42. It says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. That's how we're supposed to treat our brother and sister. That's why Bam, Bam looks so different to people. People gonna think we a cult. People gonna think we crazy because we're actually doing the things that the apostles did. Which was, guess what? We was in the scriptures. What do we do? We in the scriptures a lot. And then it says fellowship. I know many churches that don't fellowship. They don't know each other for real. They just meet each other on Sunday. But we're supposed to fellowship. That's when you know you the spirit and truth part really starts revealing what is the true truth. We're supposed to feel like family because this is your spiritual family. That's why we, we hang out and have fun because I'm telling you, man, we really are brothers and sisters. We are the people who we're supposed to be. Amen? So we're supposed to fellowship. We're supposed to have fun. We're supposed to know each other. We're supposed to know each other's names. We're supposed to know what's going on with each other's life so we can pray and help each other. So we fellowship in the breaking of bread. So share. We need to share with each other. If your brother needs a dollar, Jay, if I got a dollar, here, bro. Here you go. You feel me? We got to understand 
that God also talks about love. You know, love doesn't you shouldn't expect the same in return so we can be grateful for what is given. But if your neighbor does have a dollar, I'm sorry, it's good to expect a dollar. You know, that's your brother and sister in Christ. You don't think Jesus gave a lot for us? He did. So let's come on. Let's let's break bread with each other. Let's understand. We, let's share. I'm going to share with Zay. If he need this, if he need that, I'm going to help him out. You feel me? That's what we got to do for each other. And know that that is just sharing with our spiritual brother and sister. Amen? That's so important. Because I don't want none of my spiritual brothers and sisters having to want for anything. I want to be able to take care of my brother and sister. I need that. I want to make sure y'all good, man. One of my goals, I'm telling you, it's not for me to be rich for myself. I want to be able to help you guys out. I don't want you guys ever to have to worry about nothing. If y'all come to me, I want to be able to take care of you guys. Because y'all took care of me and helped me so much. I needed y'all. In a time when things were so rough, I feel like I have a family now. I ain't have no friends. My neighbors left when I called them my friends. I called them my bro. But now they, I realize now that God gave me a revelation, they're my neighbor. And you can't be a brother to your neighbor. You can't. And God is telling us that, bro, since we found family, let's understand what we're supposed to do with it. That's to be open, honest, humble. And if any of you guys are not doing that with each other, then stop acting like the enemy. Don't be talking smack about nobody in this ministry. We don't want no drama. We don't want none of that stuff. We're trying to get better. We're going to rebuke the enemy. We're going to rebuke the spirit of gossip. We have to, because there has to be somewhere where you can feel as though you're open and free. Because I know how hard it is. People pay thousands of dollars to be able to be listened to and counseled to. That's what they call it, counseling. For them to feel heard, this is what we're supposed to do, okay? As the kingdom of God. We counsel them with the word of God. And we help them. That's why we need to continuously be studying and showing ourselves approved so that we can help our neighbor when they have a problem. Oh, I just read this scripture. Go here. And now this is perfect for my neighbor. Now God just revealed to them what they're supposed to do in their situation. That's what, na that's what brothers and sisters do. Amen? So let's read the roles. So who's the first role? Who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is who? Worldly people and everyone. Amen? Your brother. Who is that? Okay. That's good. So how do we treat our neighbor? With love. Amen. And we got to uphold what? A standard, right? Of Christ. Don't let them get you off the, your game. That was point one. Don't let them get off your game. Number two, how do you treat your brother and sister in Christ? What do you say? With love. With love, but also with... Fellowshipping, breaking of bread, trusting. We need to understand how close in fellowship. I want to get to know my brother and sister in Christ. You never know what can come out of a relationship like that. I'm telling you. Because the worldly relationships gave me nothing. Nothing. They literally was killing me. I didn't want to smoke, but someone had to bring it to me. I didn't want to drink. Hard liquor. But someone brought it to me. We need our spiritual brothers and sisters to bring to us the word. To try to rebuke when people try to give us things that we weren't supposed to partake in. We're supposed to fill and clean and help them out. We are the true doctors. We're the spiritual doctors to help them out because Jesus Christ lives in each one of us. So let's strive to be a brother and sister to those in need. Amen. Our brothers and sisters. Point number three. Y'all getting something? Okay. Your father and mother. This is a good one. Your father and mother. So your, your actual parents, okay? Your actual physical parents, okay? The ones who birthed you. Okay? Exodus 12, I mean 2012 says... Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. So if you honor them, you will live long, okay? Remember that God promised that. 
So let's honor our mother and father. Let's honor our parents, okay? Do we know what honor is? Because sometimes that might mean people think that means do whatever the heck they say. They're not our God, but we're supposed to honor them because our parents can be definitely wrong. I don't care how much they stroll around the church. I don't care what their name is. They can be wrong. And that's real. But we are supposed to consult them and show them love and honor them and let them know that they are important to us, no matter if they are worldly or not. We have to. Honor means high respect, great esteem, adherence to what is right. What is right? Who's right? Who's the only one who's right? Who's the only one who's good? So when they're lined up with the word, we have to respect them. We, I mean, we have to respect them, but we have to make sure that we understand that that is how we got to do things, okay? When they're right, we have to abide and listen and be open to listen to what they say. Because my mom says a lot of gems that that's the Lord. I feel sometimes that's the Lord speaking a lot. But sometimes people are wrong. Amen? So we have to, okay? So honor them. Ooh, point number four, your boo. Mm. Your boo. This is a revelation. <laughs> your boo. How to treat your boo. Mark, how much time we got left, bro? Ten. ten. Okay. We got ten. Cool. See, I'm trying to get on time. See? <laughs> this is the last point, too. Let's go. <laughs> the shot clock running down. <laughs> They're doing that eight seconds. <laughs> All right, cool. Genesis 1, 27 through 28. Jay, read that for me. You can read it from my phone right here. Genesis. This joint. Okay, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you, bro. That's a good one. I love that one. Mmm, this is a revelation. Y'all ready? This is how you know you should have this boo, okay? This is where you should place them neighbor, brother, sister, boo, okay? We're going to know how to do it now because there's a lot of things, okay? Revelation. Y'all ready? Write this joint down. Okay? Hmm. Y'all ready? I'm excited. If the relationship ain't multiplying your fruit. <laughs> if the relationship is not multiplying your fruit. He said be fruitful and multiply. God gave you some fruit. If them joints ain't multiplying. They has to go. Who? If you a peach and you ain't producing more peaches, that person either going to make your peach tree die, wither. You still a peach tree, but you ain't producing the peaches that you could produce. Whew. This person needs to make you multiply. It's not about them comforting you if they're making sure you're comfortable, but really when you're comfortable, you're dying. Because I don't want to keep you stagnant if I really love you. You got to be multiplying. Not in your career. Not in these things, but because you can't control your career. You can control your effort, but you can't control what God, the doors God opens. So that's all him. <laughs> so stop thinking that, you know, this person pushed me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could tell you to do this, but is your fruit multiplying? The fruit of the spirit. Love. Is that multiplying? Peace. Is that multiplying? Is your joy? Whew. Is your long suffering increasing? Is your gentleness increasing? <laughs> Is this person going to check you, basically? When you're not gentle, yo, you need to be gentle. 
Let's talk. <laughs> Instead of cussing me out or getting mad, let's talk. Let's communicate. Let's get to a common ground. Gentleness. Faithfulness. Is this person making you want to be more faithful to the Lord? And faithful to the things that God has called you to be? Whew. Because if God called me to be a preacher, I need someone to help me be the best preacher I can be. I need that. I need that. Because I can't, God blessed you and placed you in my life so that you can help my fruit multiply. What God has given you, he said, ooh, man plants, but God does the increase. So think about it. If this person's from God, it has to increase. Woo! It has to, because it's of God. God makes things greater. God don't make things shrink. He don't. No, he don't. <laughs> the only thing he'll shrink is sin, the things you need to get rid of. So the things that you was comfortable, that feels good in your flesh, that's going to shrink. That's why you got to be in your word to see, is this the right thing to shrink? Is this Because, you know, some fats are good for you. Whew. But you got to understand the fats that are bad for you, even though it feels good. That fat's not good for you. Whew. They better make you multiply. I'm telling you, man, because you got to know how great your capacity is. I'm getting tired of people who are dealing with people when they have this much potential, but only using this much because nobody's pushing them because they don't want to be pushed and they're putting their trust in people that are making their fruit smaller. Yes. That's good, bro. Yes. Be fruitful. Someone got to be pushing you so hard that they make you want to produce. They make you want to produce more. And you can start doing <laughs> multiplying fruit on your own time. Dang. That's real, man. You got to know this stuff. You got to let that person, if that person is forcing you to sin, this person is encouraging your sin, this person is encouraging you to not do the things of God, this person is encouraging you not to get in your word, he's not, or they're not helping you get there. In your times and needs, he's going to other things except the word. Even that is bad. Every issue got to come from the source who gives you all good. That's how you multiply, because if God does the increase, how can God do the increase if you're not in his word? Some of us are so talented and so gifted that it will be hard. It might take a long time for you to find someone that multiplies your fruit. Because God got something that special for you. You're that special that it takes someone very special to multiply your fruit because they got to get past that hard shell. Whew. Let Christ first get in that hard shell. Let him teach you what to look for. If you're supposed to be a preacher, I need all the qualities that it takes to become a preacher. I can't have somebody, you know, who's like, you know, I need someone secure if I'm a preacher. I need someone to trust the God in me if I want to be a preacher. If I'm a singer, I got to have someone who understands and will support me. Support me in my dreams, my goals that glorify the king. If you're not in your comfort zone or you're out of your style, because some people are out of their style right now and don't even know it. Because they're trying it their own way and they start dabbling with things. The person who's really of you and for you, like let's say Jalen and McKay, right? If Michaela is trying to sing a way that she's not really supposed to, Jalen's supposed to say, no, nah, that's not you, McKay. God will increase this way you do it. You'll bring souls to the king the way you were supposed to do it. And when you know somebody spiritually, when you know somebody that God made, he starts to know you. And so he knows where you're supposed to go and not because he's covering you. He needs someone to cover you. So when the devil wants to stomp on your seeds, he's the one protecting you. He's the one covering you so that the seed can go and grow to its fullest potential. That's what God wants for us. Be fruitful and multiply in Christ, not in your goals, 
by his will, not yours. You need to be stronger in your scriptures. You need to be stronger in your prayers in order to have this person be your boo. Because if not, you're going to settle. And you're going to be mad. You're probably going to cheat. There's a lot of things. So make sure this person makes your fruit multiply. God will make it pretty for you. He will. Trust me. Be patient. But the main thing is make them fruit multiply. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. If you guys don't know who you're supposed to be in Christ, just know that, you know, people, that's why you got family here also. So we can nourish the seed so we can know who you're supposed to be, how the kingdom can use you. That's why every single role is so important. Understand that, look, this person I'm supposed to honor my father and mother because they know me in a certain way in my lowest and certain points. They're supposed to be honored. They have to be honored. They have to. But you got to understand that God is your true father. Don't make your earthly father your, your God. Don't let them teach you scriptures. You got to teach yourself scriptures. Allow the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do and abide by just him. OK. Amen. But you honor them. You come to them. OK. So father and mother, they're honored. OK. Your neighbor, they are people you're supposed to be a teacher for. You got to uphold that standard. And if they leave you, that means they are leaving Jesus. In all reality, if you don't want to get in the word with me, then I guess you don't want to grow. And I can't have a stagnant relationship because I can't even I can't stand my man's killing himself. You got to can't stand your friends killing themselves. That's when you know you love them. And God says, love your neighbor. And then your boo. By picking a boo, you got to know who you're supposed to be. Know that first you just got to serve the Lord. Find any way to serve the Lord. They can help steer you to where you're supposed to be. But they got to help you in, um, you know, Glorifying God. They got to help you, you know, serve. They got to teach you, serve more. Do this. Try this. Or do the things that God wants you to do. And he says, love God and serve him. Okay? But he got to make, he got to push that. He got to increase that. If not, that ain't it. So those are the roles. Amen? Amen. Remember, if you don't place them, that's your fault. Because you have the power. You have Jesus, right? If you have Jesus, you have power. There is power in the name of Jesus, and the name of Jesus lives in you. Now you have to categorize people. Okay? So stop stressing and tripping over your neighbor. When you know that they are blind, they don't know what you know. You got to expect them, so you got to be the teacher. So get in your word so you can be a teacher so that they can come to Jesus and know stuff for you and they can help out their neighbor. Amen. Amen. All this stuff is important. OK. So y'all receive some because I'm done. But hold on, I'm, I'm going to do a quick altar call. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. So, yeah, I'm done. But um, I have a feeling that people need prayer. That someone needs to rededicate or someone needs to um, come to him. OK. So we're going to do an exercise today. OK. OK. Y'all ready? So I want everyone to close their eyes. This is going to be quick, but I feel like someone needs a rejuvenation of Jesus Christ in their life right now. I feel like this message has been tormenting them because situations have just been so hard. I need everyone to close their eyes and understand so they can know what they need. First, we're going to pray. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are our king, Lord. You are the rock that we can hide behind when we're scared. Whew. There's many scary things in this world. There's so many devils, so many demons, so many things trying to come after us, Lord. Lord, there's so many things that we are trying to do in this life to try to glorify you, Lord. Reveal to us what we need to do. Those who need healing, heal them, Lord Jesus. We need some help. We need some help. 
We need your help, Lord Jesus. We need your help more than we need breath. We need everything that you need. We need you, Lord. We will be chasing after you. And because my chase has been slower, because of the things of life, and because of situations that have been happening, Lord, please help me out. Give me that spark back. Give me that fire back from when I first met you. Give me my first love back, which is you. Lord, thank you. We love you, Lord. Lord, just please bless everyone right now. And I want you guys' eyes to be closed. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your eyes closed, okay? Keep your eyes closed. I want everyone to understand, if you need prayer, keep your eyes closed. Raise your hand. Be humble. Be humble. Because we don't want people looking at each other. We don't want no judgment. If you need prayer, raise your hand. Keep it high. Keep it high. Keep it high. Amen. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Stay. Stay right here. And if you guys can, please take a leap of faith and stand up, please. Please stand up. Please stand up. Okay. Keep your eyes open. Eyes open, those who stand up. Close your eyes if you haven't. Okay. Because I want everyone in here to pray for your brother. Whew. Everyone in here to pray for your brother and sister. The people who stand up, please come, come here. Come to me. But everyone else, please close your eyes. And I want everyone, it doesn't matter who they are. Since they're your brother and sister, they need prayer. So I want everyone, when I start praying, we all pray for our brother and sister. Amen? All of us. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed, okay? So I want everyone to stand right here. Line up, you guys. You guys stay right there. Stay in your seat. I want you guys to go hard for him. Stay hard for your neighbor. Can you guys line right here? It's right here. Oh, just like in front, yeah. It's right here. So everyone pray for the people who came up, okay? Just pray. When I start praying, all you guys pray. And I want to hear the prayers. We want to hear the power of the Holy Spirit in this room to save and help people. Y'all ready? Okay. Everybody close your eyes right here. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we say thank you for everything that you have done for each one of these people, Lord. We pray that whatever they stand in need of, if it's salvation, give them a fire for you, Lord. Give them a fire and an understanding of you and that you are the standard. Bless them to get away from their worldly friends and stay with the people of God, Lord. Let them come to you because we are trying to help these people who need prayer. We want to make sure that their situations are correct and helped and needed, Lord. We need to help each other, Lord. Lord, please help them receive you more of you, more of you, even though there's things that happen in life. Please help them out, Lord. Bless your Holy Spirit to reign right now in their situations. Show them that it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, even though they might be dealing with abuse. When it comes to mental, spiritual, psychological, everything, Lord, please rest their torment, Lord, and bless them to come to you and humble themselves and come to you because we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Please, Lord, help every single soul that came up here, Lord. Thank you for their humility. If they need to rededicate, Lord, give them this fire, and they know that if they love you keep their commandments so they are choosing to love you today lord get in their word bless them to get in their word and get that fire that's so strong and powerful that they just feel so more powerful they feel this peace and they also seek help they come to help they don't stay by themselves because the devil can stand by himself and we don't want them to ever be touched and be tainted because the devil is a liar and he's going to be whispering in their ear, Lord. But we ask that their situations just change in the name of Jesus. Give them a season shift right now in the name of Jesus. This is what they needed, Lord Jesus. Give them power, Lord Jesus. Give them a sound mind and a peace, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Give them joy, Lord Jesus. Because they're not feeling joy in the situation, Lord Jesus. Give them a way out. Bless them to seek first the kingdom of heaven, and they know that all things will be added, Lord. They are seeking for something, but they need to look at your face, and your word alone is your face. Remove any ideologies of anything like horoscopes or anything that they are trying to lean to for their understanding. The psychologist can't tell them what you can tell them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Please bless them to seek you. Because you are so good. And if they need help, let them humble themselves and come to someone who can help. 
Lord, we just say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We need your help, Lord, in this room. I feel your presence, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are Jesus, your power in the name. I cast everything that is going on with these people in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless them to find you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless them to look to the hills, for there cometh thy help. They look to the hills because they know they're getting heaven. Lord, please bless them to understand they have salvation. Bless them to get that fire back. Even though the fire might go out and might feel bad, but bless them to feel that fire back, Lord Jesus. We need your help. Fill this room, Lord Jesus. Fill this atmosphere. Help them out, Lord Jesus, because we need them. We need more soldiers for your army, Lord, because the enemy is here. He rules this earth. But let's bring more soldiers to the line, Lord, to protect your name, to protect your kingdom, to let your name be reigned all over here. Bless them to understand that even though they can take the prayers out of the church, they can't take the prayer out of the people. Lord, we're going to say that we really going to try to make sure that we glorify you. We take away all ideologies in the name of Jesus that is not lined up with your word, Lord Jesus. Fill this people. Fill your church. Fill their temple with your word. Bless them to understand how powerful you are. Bless them to understand how powerful you are. I want to see a miracle in their life, Lord. And the miracle is their emotional and psychological and spiritual change, Lord Jesus. Bless their situations. Let it be better, Lord. Bless them to start praying for each other and their neighbor. Please help them out, Lord Jesus. We need their help. We need them. We need each soldier that you have saved, Lord Jesus. We need more. We need more people to come to you. We need more people to come to this ministry. We need more people to see this vision that we see of unity with the body of Christ, for the real body of Christ. Bless them to help. Bless each vessel to be a vessel to bring more people to you, Lord Jesus, because we need each one of their goals. We need each one of their skill sets and bless them to find themselves in you, not in themselves, because some may trust in horses and chariots, but we will look to the hills where they come with thine help. We will understand how powerful you are, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You are powerful, Lord. Bless them to categorize the people in their life. Rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. The enemy will try to just conquer this thing. They're trying to conquer vessels. But, Lord, you cannot let the devil get away from them. No weapon formed against them shall prosper because the weapons are many and they're trying to be formed for them but lord we will make sure that they will never prosper in the name of jesus because you will step in their situations fill them up jesus they know that nobody can take them out of your hands lord bless them to understand or bless them to seek so that they can have faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god bless them to stand firm in your word stand firm in your understanding stand firm in your promises so that they can know that the he that has begun a great work in them is faithful to perform it the devil cannot kill them before their work is performed lord we thank you lord they all have a great work they all have a great work bless them all to understand that their great work is for you not themselves we love you lord jesus we love you lord jesus we love you lord jesus thank you lord thank you lord Bless them to connect with their brother and sister, Lord, so that we can receive help constantly, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Whew. <laughs> I'm done now. Thank you, you guys. Whew, thank you. That's how you shift a situation. <laughs> you humble yourself before the throne and understand Jesus really will give you peace. Yeah. He will. His power. You, Be bold with your prayers. Understand that everyone needs prayer. Ask your neighbor what is wrong so that we can minister to them the gospel so they can feel the truth. Because they're, the reason why they're not doing it is because they're tired of a lie. The devil is a liar. The devil's been whispering in people's ears. They're whispering in all of our ears. But we need help to rebuke him. Amen? Amen. Whew. Yeah, I'm going to pass this to you, Jay. That, I'm done. Amen. Give a round of applause for that word today. Wow. Oh, I have mercy.